I first of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, little conference. I'm happy to be in Prague because my personal uh, history and a lot of other stories that I, I'm not invited to speak about all this, but it's a part of my uh, biography, Prague. I wasn't in Prague before. Uh, maybe in the tummy of my mother, because we crossed in 46, before I was born in Linz in Austria, my mother had me, uh, you know, <laughs> I was in Prague, but not as a human being. <laughs> <laughs> and I was born a few months later in, in Austria. Anyway, uh, sorry that I cannot speak Czech, and also that I am going to speak a very bad English. But uh, I imagine that it will be easier for a lot of people to hear the very bad English than the English from somebody that came from London. I prefer to speak in Hebrew, but you will be against it. <laughs> yeah, I'm very good at Hebrew. And also, much better in French, but also it's not an option, no? In French. I will speak. English, a bad English, a slow English, and it will be okay, I hope, okay? Now, uh, I am very happy, and I have to thanks a lot the publisher of the book that uh, published it in Czechia, in Czechia, in the Republic of Czech. And I uh, want to thanks also the Professor Bach, uh, that wrote the postfast, and also the translator of the book. Uh, now, I imagine that most of you will not read it, maybe buy, and I hope, <laughs> but not to read because, you know, it's a very, very thin book, you see. Today with the TV and the internet, it's very difficult to read. <laughs> then because uh, I believe that uh, not all of you will read the book, I will try to make it very shortly, okay? <laughs> the, 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 the important lines of the book. And then it will not be necessary to read it after. <laughs> yeah, deal or not? A good deal. Now, in, uh, in the, I think that I started to, to think about the book in uh, 2005, six. I started to work about it. After a long uh, work about uh, French intellectuals, uh, European cinema, etc. When I got the full professorship, I thought that I have to write something more serious. And uh, as I know that nobody can touch me after having the full professorship, <laughs> I decided to write this book that I knew that it will not be so easy for the Israelis to read it. I was very surprised when the book was published in Hebrew. By the way, all my books are first published in Hebrew and then translated to other languages. It's good to know, especially for people that think that I'm anti-Israeli, anti-Semitic, etc., etc. Then the book was published in 2008 and became a bestseller for 19 weeks in, in, in Israel. I was very surprised because it's not an easy book to read. If you start to read it, you can jump off the first, uh, of the first chapter, for example, it's too long. <laughs> I never arrived to finish the first chapter, by the way. To read, not to write. Now, <laughs> I decided to write this book because I, said, I thought that I am the only one in my generation that can write a book like this. I'm sure that later, in a few years, it became very banal, <coughs> a lot of thesis in this book. But I knew that because I am from Jewish origin, because I am an Israeli, and because I am a professor of history, I am in a good position to write a book like this. Because if I was not a professor of history, you know, it was problematic to write a history book like this. If I was not Israeli, I don't believe that I dare to write a book like this. And if I wasn't from Jewish origin, I couldn't imagine to write a book like this. <laughs> you understand? The book deals with a lot of things in the Jewish and Zionist history. 
uh, it's not only the poor professorship that I got to push me to hide it. The other reason was the discovery of Israeli archaeologue about the, the fact that the Bible is not a historical book. I don't know if you heard about it. <laughs> but you know, you discover it by Israeli Zionist archaeologues. For example, discovered that the exod of Jewish from Egypt didn't happen. Couldn't be happened. Not that there is no proof. That it's something that couldn't be happened in this day that the Bible is telling about. I remember the first time that I read about it. I, I, I heard a conference about it before it was published. I was shocked. You have to know that the Israeli pupils are studying the Bible from seven years old till 18 years old as a historical book, not as a theological book. You understand me? No? <laughs> you can imagine, I grew up with this book all my life. By the way, I liked it very much. The stories, you know, the pornography inside, you know, <laughs> David the King, you know, really. I liked very much, and by, I believed in most of the stories. When I was young, I was leftist, after the, the Seven Days War. I was a leftist, but I believed in the exod of the Jews from came out from Egypt. I believed that the Jewish people exist for 3,000 years. I believed that the Jews were exiled from Judea by the Romans. I was a leftist, but I believed in these stories. And I remember discovering the, the writings of the new archaeologue in Tel Aviv University. I was shocked. How come? The exode didn't happen? And then I decided to write a little book about the fact that the Bible is a very, very important theological book, the basic of, if you want, the Western civilization, one of the bases of the Western civilization. When I say Western civilization, the Islam is included in it. Don't laugh. I mean, it's not the basic for the Hindu, for the, you know, the religions of the East, but the Islam is a part of the Western civilization. It's very astonishing to say it's there. <laughs> anyway, I think that the Bible is a, one of the basic of the intellectual development of the West. A very important one, but not the historical. And then I decided to write a little book to make it older, because I think the archaeologues are very good, but they are very bad historians. It's not a joke. And I finished the first chapter, too long, by the way. And then I discovered a little article that said that probably the exile of the Jews didn't happen under the Roman Empire. You know, in the 70 after Jesus Christ, it was a revolt in Judea. And the, the legends say that the, the Jews were exiled from Palestine or Judea, as you want, or from Knaan. You understand? I believe that here in the audience, there are a lot of people who are believing that the Jews were exiled from Judea. No? There are some people who are singing like this. The diaspora, the Jews came from the exile, yeah? Act of the exile. Yes, there are people who are believing it here in the room. Yes, sure. Yes, yeah, sure. But the problem is that when I started to ask the question, I went to the library. We have a very, very large library in the Tel Aviv University with a lot of books of all the Jewish communities in the history. Really, thousands of books. I remember the day going to the library, looking for scientific, scientific books, historical books, about the act of the exile of the Romans. This bed from it. And I was sitting a day in the library and didn't find any book. They are telling about the exile. By the way, you know, I'm retired last year from the Tel Aviv University. I'm emeritus. But if somebody will find a scientific book, historical book, about the act of exile, I will burn all my books till now. I promise. Anyway, I didn't find any book that are telling the act of exile from a historical point of view. 
I wasn't sure about myself. I went back to the Department of History and I asked the historians, specialists of the ancient history, the Jewish origin, how I can find a book about the exile, the act of exile of the Jews. And they say, we never said that it was. <laughs> we never wrote that the Jews were expelled from Judea. I said, how come? We never. There is not any article, any book. I, I, I remember telling him, we can go out to the corridor and ask the student if they believe that the Jews were ex expelled from Judea. Everybody will say yes. It's not only in the Jewish tradition, it's also in the Christian tradition. By the way, later I discovered that the idea of expelling the Jew from Judea is a Christian idea. From the third century. It's not a Jewish, at the beginning. It was a Christian that they say that the Jews were punished with the exile because they contributed to kill the Son of God. The origin of this myth of the exile is Christian, it's not Jewish. After it, the Jews adopted. Okay? There is not any historical book of the act of the exile of the Jews from Judea because it didn't happen. Like the exile from Egypt didn't happen. Two questions immediately jumped. First of all, what happened with the population in place in Judea? I, at that, that time, it was called Judea, not the land of Israel. Later, in the Talmud, we started with the term land of Israel. But in the Bible, in, the, in that time, it was Judea, the, the kingdom of Judea. There are two questions. What happened with relation to place? If they were not expelled, what happened with them? First question. Second question, how come that there are so many Jews in the world? And then I started to feel free to put new questions about the history of the Jews. You see, the uh, population of peasants are not emigrating. Most of the peasants, and you have to know that the, at that time, the Judean, the Jews, if you want, <coughs> was not commerciants and merchants of money and all this stuff that the anti-Semitic believed that the Jews is in their nature. Most of the people living there in Judea was peasants, simply peasants. In their state, in Judea, they become Palestine by the Romans. Most of them. The Romans took a lot of uh, slaves from after the revolt. By the way, they spread the Judaism because they take a lot of slaves from Judea. But the, the most part of the population stay in place. And I believe because they were not expelled. That in the seventh century, I mean, they be, a part of them become Christian under the Byzantine domination. But you know, the difference between Jewishness and the, and the Christianity is very, very, the gap is very, very deep. You understand why, no? Even if you use the Judah Christianity, you have to know the Jews didn't want to become Christian because uh, Christian believed that the God has a son. No? But the Jewish stay Jews because they didn't believe the Messiah arrived. You have to understand <coughs> this is the definition of Jewish. There is not a, civil, a, Jew, a civilization of Judo Christian background. The Jews refused to admit that Jesus is the son. But when the Islam arrived in the, 17th, in the beginning of the 7th century, it was a kind of religion much more friendly because they didn't say that uh, there is a son of God. Muhammad is a prophet, like Moïse and all this. The gate between Islam and Judaism 
it's much more narrow than between Christianity and Islam. Not only because the Jews and the Muslims are not eating pork. It is a lot of other things. And I believe that in the 17th century, most of the population of the Jews become Muslims. There are a lot of members of Hamas that contest my, uh, <laughs> my hypothesis. They don't like the idea. And a lot of Jews don't like the idea. But I believe deeply <coughs> that uh, most of the population of Jews will become Palestine and that time become Muslims. But if there are Palestinians here, I <coughs> to stress the fact that if it's the possibility that the Palestinians are the direct descendants of the ancient Hebrew, it doesn't mean that they are Jews, or it doesn't mean that they are not mixed with others. You understand? All the people in the world are mixed people, even the fin in Finland. They try in Finland, you say, in some moment, to show that they are pure. Then they discover that it's not. By the way, the Palestinians, the Muslims in Palestine, I think that a part of them, very, very mixed, are more descendant of the ancient Hebrew than me and the other Jews that are sitting in this room. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a shame. <laughs> we came, I mean, the Jews. I'm not a Jew, but you know, I'm a Jew. For my parents are Jews. We are Jews. <laughs> I no, it's not a joke. I'm from Jewish origin. It's unbelievable, but it's a fact. And I'm not shame about it. I think that the, the possibility that the Palestinians are descendants of the ancient Hebrew is much more greater than me. Okay? Not uh, because of the way that I'm looked. All this, not at all. I say all the people are mixed, and the Palestinians also are mixed with Persian, with Egyptian, and etc. Every conqueror that conquered Palestine he left his sperm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, soldiers are terrible. <laughs> no, no, it's not a joke. I'm speaking seriously. Then don't look of pureness of Palestine. Now, the second question that bothered me. How come that there are so many Jews in the world? If they were not expelled, what happened? It wasn't so difficult to discover that Jewishness, Judaism, was the first religion, proselytic religion. It's difficult to think about it today. But you have to understand that Judaism was the first monotheism proselytic monotheism. Every monotheism is a proselytic by essence. In the Judaism, from the time of the, how we say it, Hashmonaim, uh, Maccabean, Maccabean kingdom, you heard? How we say it? Hasmoneans. Hasmoneans. Kingdom. Judaism was proselytic. In the time of the Hasmonic uh, kingdom, it was by force, by violence. They uh, converted all the neighbors by force. Later, you doubt it? <laughs> Later, the conversion was by, uh, you know, by uh, trying to convince people that uh, one God is much better than a, a lot of gods. I'm not sure till now it's true, but it was very strong at that time. And uh, Judaism converted around the Mediterranean a lot of populations. Till that it was transformed, transformed partly by the Christian. You have to understand that at the beginning, when the, we are looking at the Roman historians, we see that they don't define exactly who is Jew and who is Christian. It wasn't clear at the beginning. The Christianity is coming out from Judaism, okay? But they developed, you know, from propaganda point of view, they will become more, much more 
skilled and intelligent. I always compare the way of converting Adamites, the Judaism with the Christianity. By the way, uh, St. Paul was uh, the beginning a Jew, and a lot of others were Jews. You understand, yeah? St. Paul. You know St. Paul? St. Paul, you know St. Paul. You are Christian, a lot of you know. St. Paul. Paulus. He was a Jew at the beginning, no? Anyway, I compare the difference that the victory of the Christianity came to the fact that they are more friendly to the user, like Windows 10 compared to DOS. <laughs> it's not a joke. They were much more friendly. <coughs> much more easier to adopt. In day one. When they won, they stopped the proselytism of the Jews. It was dangerous to for the Jews to continue to proselyte, to convert and act the neighbors because of the laws in the Constantinus regime. You understand? Christianity <coughs> stopped the Jewishness or the Judaism to be a proselytic religion. They continue to proselyte elsewhere, not in the Mediterranean. Very quickly, very quickly I discovered that there were at least five Jewish converted kingdoms in the history. Can you imagine it? When I was a, when I started in school after the little bit in the high school, I never knew that in, in Yemen, what is Yemen today, in the fifth century it was a Jewish kingdom. You heard about it? <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? Yes. You believe that the nice girls and boys from Yemen, you know, with their hairs like, uh, you know, it's because of the wind from the Red Sea? It was a kingdom in Yemen, a very important one. By the way, very aggressive of Jewishness. They, were, they jumped uh, against the uh, Christianity. The Islam didn't uh, develop yet. It was a very, very strong kingdom. And after it, I discovered that in North Africa also, I discovered Kaina El Dayel. Kaina, you know, a Jewish uh, queen, very important one, very strong one, of the Berbers and uh, the Magreb. The 12 Jews, uh, she adopted, but converted to Judaism. Judaism was the first. Religion. Why, why do you say that she converted if she was Kahina? So she is Kahan. Her father, her father was converted. By the way, why I say converted? Ah, you believe that all the Kohen came from Aaron, the Kohen? The brother of uh, no, because I think that in more Semitic languages, Kahan is a priest. But, but if she was a Kahan, and she, she Sorry. Oh, Not the dialogue, the no, 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 because the others will be very, very angry if I will develop the dialogue with you. With all the respect, it's true that it's, her father was converted. Not, by the way, a lot of, there are tribes in the Maghreb, uh, in what is today uh, Jerba and Tunis, that a tribe was converted to Judaism with all become coin, adopted the, the the, the name coin, or Levi, because it was very popular. Uh, anyway, the little kingdom of uh, Dahia el Kaina, Dahia the coin, <coughs> fought against the Islam very strongly. And she became a legend in the Maghreb. And then I discovered that, that a lot of Jews of the Maghreb came from Berber origin. For a lot of Berbers, it was easy to accept Judaism before the Islam arrived. Also because of Phoenician, the Phoenician, you know, Phoenician Karak, this tradition on the coast. Anyway, the big problem was the Kazan. You heard about the Kazan? Yeah. I remember arriving to the chapter about the Kazan, and everybody said, don't touch it. Don't touch it. It's not serious. 
Only Arto Kessler, that was a writer, not a historian, could deal with it. Don't touch it. But immediately when they say, don't touch it, I started to study. <laughs> now, you have to know, we can discuss a lot. Till the 60s of the 20th century, all the, most, most of the Zionist historians in Israel and also in the United States believe the demographically, the presence of so many Jews in East Europe can be explained only with the hypothesis of the Khazar king. There is no doubt that the Khazar empire became Jewish. This is not any doubt. The question is the destruction of this empire in the immigration a part of, of this population to East Europe. Anyway, I think that most, not all, of the Jewish of the East Europe came from the Khazar Empire. Me included. Okay? Now, it doesn't mean that all of them are from Khazar origin, because it was mixed with other emigration, but you cannot explain how come that in the end of the 19th century, you have in the Russian Empire, something like seven to eight million Jews. In the west of Europe, you have only a quarter of a million. <coughs> Any explanation cannot ignore the Khazar hypothesis. And I insist about it. By the way, I tell you that most of the Zionists until the 60s believed that you know, the, the reservoir of Jewishness that in East Europe came from the Khazar Empire. I'm not saying that if I have a Khazar origin, believe me, it doesn't bother me. But from 67, after the conquest of Jerusalem, the Arab Jerusalem, we had to become, all of us, a direct descendant of David the You understand? You cannot conquer all Palestine, Jerusalem, etc., etc., and be a descendant of the Khazar. You understand it? And then the Khazar disappeared from the Jewish and Zionist historiography. Completely. The only uh, scientific book, I don't think the history of science, okay, but the only serious book about the Khazar in the relationship with the demography of the East European Jews wrote a professor of history in the <laughs> university, a book that wasn't translated to any language because he was in dilemma, this uh, historian. A very important book. He was in dilemma. He didn't want to translate it because he was a very strong Zionist. But he wrote the book and he tried to show that the origin of most of the Eastern, what you call Ashkenaz Jews, this is a new term because, you know, Ashkenaz in, in the Jewish tradition is only the German Jews were. Ashkenaz is German. And my parents were considered hundreds of years old as Eastern Jews, the Ostjuden. You heard the term? We were the Ostjuden for the Ashkenaz. After it, coming to Palestine, we become Ashkenaz. And the Maghrebian, the Jews from Maghreb, you know what is in Arabic, Maghreb? Yeah. West, they become Eastern Jews. <coughs> the Jews that came from Maghreb to Israel become Oriental. Well, the name is West. Anyway, you see words in history play a very important role. I'm sorry, what is Kaza? What is Kaza? Look at me. <laughs> no, it's a joke. I am not a Kazakh, I am Israeli from Jewish origin. Maybe it's a Kazakh, but it doesn't bother me at all. Kazakh was an empire, a very important, from the 18th century, a, a kingdom with Turkey, uh, Tur Turkish origin, not Turkish of today. You see, all the tribes were Turkmen. Turkmen, you say? It's not exactly. 
Huh? Turkic. I Turkic. think Turkic. Turkic. Turkic, not Turkman, because you know it's in actuality now the Turkman. <laughs> Don't mention it because you will be bad with the Russians. <laughs> Turkic uh, tribes. And they built the empire, a very important empire between the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea, a very strong one. And they adopted Judaism in the 8th century. They continue to exist more or less, there is discussion about it, till the 10th century. And the Russian destroyed us. <laughs> The Russian conquered us. By the way, if you read Pushkin, you can see it, you know, the Bastille, you know what to say. The, the Russian crushed us. Till now, you know, uh, I think in Russia there is a, a very important statue where you see a Russian, uh, a Russian military who is crushing the Khazars. In the Pushkin, we find uh, also the retreat of the Khazars. They were like uh, Daesh today, a little bit. <laughs> The Russians were afraid of them. And you have to know that Russians started to be, be Russia, not in Moscow, not in St. Petersburg, in Kiev. <laughs> it's the irony of history. Russia started in Kiev, you know. Well, you are Czech, you have to know. <laughs> continue the question. I continue the book to walk about it, to look after uh, evidence about this. I, I read a lot. I spent all my time to read more and more stuff about history of the Jews. In the, in the end of, this, my, of my book, I, did, I, I tried to show why one of the reasons that I wrote this book. And I tried to explain, I have a few minutes more, yeah, okay? Mm -hmm. In the last chapter of the book, Feel free. No, 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 no. I don't like uh, to pass the time. And I'm sure that there are people that want to ask me their questions. Now, the last chapter can be considered the most important from political point of view. <laughs> I believe here in Prague, you believe that Israel is a democratic state. Sure or not? We are more democratic than the Egyptian uh, regime, today, no? We are more democratic than Assad. Regime. And we are more democratic than Daesh, no? <laughs> the question is if we are a democratic state like the Republic of Czech, what do you say? Not that I think that the Republic of Czech is the, the model of democracy. <laughs> no, because it's a young democracy in some way, okay? With all the respect. Now, what is important? The question is, if Israel is a democracy like the Republic of Czech, what do you think? No. 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 Why not? Why not? There are Czech here from Jewish origin? Because state and religion is hand in hand. No. You see, in some way, I can say that Britain, you know, the separation between the church and the political power in England and Britain never was completed. But I think that Great Britain is a democratic state because Britain belongs to all the British citizens. Yes, the, the Scots say, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, we are equal, but we want also our specificity. Yeah? But nobody in London said that the Scots are not full citizens of Great Britain, okay? <laughs> Nobody said. The contrary, London said, you are British like us. <clears throat> there is not a complete separation in England, in Britain, between church and, and power. But it is a democratic state. You agree with me? Britain is not a republic like the church. But this is democracy. Now, in Czechia, all the citizens by principle are equal. The state belongs to them, no? Yeah, I hope so. We hope. In principle. 
you know, I arrived to an age that I know that in practice is never like this. But after the law, after the principle, the Republic of Czech belongs to all the Czech, Jewish, Muslims, and the others. And gypsies. And gypsies. Yes, Czech, the Republic of Czech is not like Hungary. Okay? <laughs> Now, why Israel is not a democracy? Because it's a, it has its citizenship based on ethnicity, not... Uh... No, no, you are wrong. So, <laughs> I mean, you are very, very close to the problem. But the last chapter in the book, I try to explain why Israel cannot be, in the same time, Jewish in democracy. You know, all the left, Zionists in Israel, the liberal, the nice people, say that Israel has to be Jewish and democratic. In the last book, I try to explain that Israel is, is maybe is liberal, pluralistic in some way. The fact is that I can teach in the Tel Aviv University. But basically, if democracy is a state that belongs to all the citizens, in a state that is looking for the good of all the citizens, this is democracy, by principle, no? Mm -hmm. Looking for the goodness of all the citizens. Israel is not the case. Mm -hmm. Israel defined itself. Because a uh, reformed Jew doesn't have the same status as Orthodox? No, no not at all. Yeah. You ever yeah. done that? One of the, the problems is that a lot of nice, liberal, secular, Jews say that the problem is the religious people. They blame the religious Jews. That they are, uh, the guilty is that they don't want a real democracy, etc., etc., etc. It's not true. The reason that Israel is not a democracy because it's defined itself as a Jewish state, not as an Israeli republic. And as you know, maybe not all of you, 25% of the citizens in Israel, I'm not speaking about the occupied territories, nothing about the occupied territories is not in this book. Okay? The second one, yes. 25% of the people, of the citizens, Israeli citizens, it's written in their, or in the identity card, or in the Minister of Interior, it's written, nationality Jews. And if your mother wasn't a Jew, uh, I have an assistant that it's written, Ukrainian nationality. You understand? Israeli citizens, Ukrainian, Russian. Check if a Czech Jew emigrate to Israel. And by good chance, his mother wasn't a Jew, only the father. The name is a very Jewish name. He came to Israel. What will be read, will write in the identity card? Czech nationality. And the, and the children that were born in Israel, that know nothing Czech, it will be, <coughs> the, uh, be written what? Czech nationality for the eternity. It's not, I don't exaggerate. By the way, you know very well that the Jew cannot marry the non-Jew in Israel. Yes, you know? Mm -hmm. You know everything, why I'm here? <laughs> <laughs> to, to make it short what I am writing, not to buy the book, I will be much more uh, quicker. Uh, then, you have to know, this is not a real democracy, it's an ethnocracy. Israel belongs in the spirit of the laws in Israel, it belongs to check from Jewish origin that are living in Prague much more than to my Israeli Palestinian student that study with me in the Tel Aviv University. You understand it? You think that I exaggerate? The definition of the nationality of the nation has not a secular principle. <coughs> Zionism needed the Jewish religion as a slave 
for its purpose. Zarin was a secular, by essence, a secular national movement. But from the beginning, they cannot, they couldn't define who is a Jew from secular criteria. You understand? What is a secular Jew? Do you know? Somebody knows what is he a secular Jew? He thinks himself being Jewish even without being religious. This is the definition. Then, if people are wanting to emigrate to Israel because they believe that they are Jew, they have the right? No, no. Mr. Well, I don't know the name. Peter Broad. Huh? Peter Broad. You are a very open-minded person. I'll just tell you and you know. No. I'll there just is... tell you that the notion of nationality or nationhood is a fairly recent one. And uh, it's a constructed uh, category. Yeah. But you know, in Britain, this constructed, constructed category of nationality is safe that if somebody is a British citizen, he belongs to the British nation. Even his parents are Pakistanis from Muslim origin. In Israel, the definition of nationality, Mr. I don't know your name, sorry. It's not the voluntaristic decision of somebody to be a Jew or not a Jew. Not at all. At the, beginning, at the beginning of my book, I'm telling about the father of my wife. That in 48, he was an anarcho-syndicalist in Catalan. And by chance, he arrived to Israel. In the beginning, he fought at the beginning of the First World. And after they discovered that he is, his mother is not a Jew. He, he couldn't become a Jew. By spirit, by voluntary decision, Mister. No, Israel is not accept that uh, the individual will decide if he is a Jew or not Jew. There is a law with a criteria. A Jew is only a guy that converted, even if he is atheist, to Judaism, or his mother is Jew. You were asking me who is a secular Jew. I tried to ask. Yes, but <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> to be honest to each other, when I asked it, I was thinking about the law in Israel. You have a personal, a very personal idea that is a very nice one, very open minded. By the way, it's interesting. You are a uh, Prague citizen, yeah? You are living in Prague? Yes. If somebody is coming, say, I decided to be a secular Jew, you will accept? I have to. Yeah. But in the reality, it doesn't happen. It does. To become a Jew, he needs what? To be converted to Judaism. To become a secular Jew, he has to be converted. <laughs> Not only this, he can prove you that his mother was a Jew. Now, it's not a joke. I am living in a state to define citizenship, nationality, after the religious criteria, because there is no other criteria to define who is a Jew. Only the DNA. But you are a citizen of Israel, even if your mother is not Jewish. That's not what you're saying. I say that 25% of the Israeli citizens are not considered by the Minister of Interior as Jew. But the state is a Jew. Don't imagine like this, that the Republic of, of Czech decided to know, to define itself as the Christian Republic of Czech. Of Czech. <laughs> it's mean that the non-Christian can be citizens. OK, no problem. But the definition of the state is the Christian Republic of Czech. I don't know if tomorrow it will not be realized, by the way. I'm so pessimistic what happened in the world. For the moment, it's not an option. You agree with me? We, from 47, before the establishment of the state, Ben-Gurion, the founder of the state, gave to the religious 
establishment, the right to define who is a Jew is not a Jew. Why? Because he didn't have any criteria to define what is a Jew. Now, I pass my time.